Okay, we're back and we're computing the posterior distribution for the mean of a univariate Gaussian. All right, so let's go back here, remind ourselves quickly what we're doing. So we're getting this the posterior distribution, this thing. So it's just the distribution on mu given our data. So we wrote that this was proportional to some stuff here, and we pulled together the exponents, and then we were looking at the exponents, and we we did a lot of little calculations here. We were trying to get it in this form because we wanted to make it, we wanted to show, we wanted to get it, get it in the form of a Gaussian distribution. So this would, this would give it in the form of a Gaussian. And we got that form, right? So this was, this would be the D here. And so we would like to match this up. So we want to, we want to match this up with what a Gaussian, the exponent in a Gaussian, looks like, and that's one over mi that's minus one over two sigma squared. Let's call it let's call it sigma n squared times mu minus the mean. Let's call that well we'll call it m. We'll just keep it like that. M squared. So we've got m uh oh and well there's gonna be a constant, right? That's fine keep that C, C prime. So the only thing we need is we need to take sigma n squared to be 1 over this guy. So let's do that. So we can achieve this, this goal. If we take, so we'll take sigma n squared equal to 1 over this. So I guess I'll just go ahead and write that. 1 over 1 over sigma naught squared plus n over sigma squared. This is going to be the variance of our distribution. And m, maybe I'll call it mn to, to emphasize the dependence on n, so this is going to be mn. mn is, that was this thing, and the, and so the, the denominator is 1 over sigma n squared, so this is equal to sigma n squared times mu naught divided by sigma naught squared plus this sum, sum of the xi's divided by sigma squared. So let's, let's simplify this a little bit here. Let's write this as Let's see, how do we want to do it? So I'm going to continue this line here. This is the mean. Let's see, how do we want to do this? I want to, I want to express it in terms of as a convex combination of mu naught and this sum here. Just to emphasize. Well, maybe, maybe I'll come back to that in a sec. So, so we've got these here. And this... So we we've got it now, right? We're 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 in good shape because as a function of mu, right? So let's let's write it all out now. So the probability of mu given the data equals since a this is this is the exponent here, and since this is since e to this is proportional. That's what, what we all that the stuff we were just proving. We were proving that e to this, as a function of mu, e to that, is proportional to the probability of mu given the data. So we have that. I'll write it this way: probability of mu given the data is proportional to e to the minus one over 2 sigma n squared times mu minus m squared, mn, I guess I said. And since a function that's proportional to the distribution uniquely determines it, then in fact this is equal to the Gaussian, so this implies that, whoops, that mu, the posterior distribution on mu, sometimes we write like this, is distributed as a normal with mean mn and variance sigma n squared. 
So this posterior distribution, you know, you would just put 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma n squared. And we've got it. So this is, this shows that the posterior distribution for a univariate, the mean of a univariate Gaussian, where we put a mean, a, un, a Gaussian mean on the, the, a Gaussian prior on the mean, the posterior distribution is also normal, and it has this mean and variance. So something to note about this, this variance, something which is a, a cool little mathematical fact is that this this if you were to multiply this by n plus 1 I guess here then it equals the harmonic mean of these of the numbers sigma naught squared sigma squared you know sigma squared and you know sigma squared n times so that's a that's a that's a nifty little way to remember this this identity here. It's harmonic mean of these numbers times or, or divided by n, n plus 1, that is. So that's nice. And, um, and this part here, this is the, it's the mean of the posterior distribution. And in fact, this also equals the map estimate for, for mu because it's the maximum a posteriori. Uh, because in this case, for a Gaussian, the maximum of the distribution it occurs at the mean. So let's write out let's write this out in a slightly different way. This is what I was about to do a second ago. Let me change colors here. Uh, to observe that it's actually a convex combination of the prior and the the MLE. So MN equals See how do we want to do this? I guess we can just I guess we can just let's let's just try this. So it's just sigma n squared over sigma naught squared times mu naught plus we divide and multiply by n, then we can get the the MLE, the sample mean. So it's gonna be sigma n squared divided by sigma squared times n times the sample mean, which is the MLE, right? The MLE is just 1 over n times the sum of the xi's. It's the sample mean. So this, so let's see, I, I said that this should be a convex combination, so the sum of these ought to be one, so maybe we should check that just to be sure. So if we sum this with this, we of course we just pull out the first guy. We get n over sigma squared plus one over sigma naught squared, and sigma n squared is sigma n squared. Sigma n squared is 1 over that thing. So it's just, right, sorry, you can't quite see them both at the same time, but sigma n squared is 1 over, it's 1 over this. So these cancel, and we get 1. So in fact, this is a convex combination here. This is a convex combination of mu naught and the MLE. So it's a nice nice interpretation of this and um, that's, 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 a, that's an important fact and I'm gonna let's, let's, I'll draw a picture of that in a second but I wanted to first yeah so we'll draw the picture here okay so here's the picture say this is our this is, this is an axis for for mu, and let's say that our prior 
mean is here. This is our prior mean. And maybe the MLE is over here. So the, what this says, it's a convex combination, so it's somewhere on the line, the straight line between these two. In this case, they're just, you know, you know, they're just real valued numbers, so it's just somewhere between these two on this interval. And uh, if you if you take uh, so let's let's do it so we can draw it here so it's somewhere maybe it's here so or rather that's M N is the posterior mean or the the map so the the prior if we were to draw the prior distribution our prior distribution remember it was a Gaussian with mean mu naught. And it had some variance, sigma naught, so it's got it looks something like this. Some some nice Gaussian. And the the posterior mean here, the map, it well rather the, the mean, the posterior distribution of the mean has variance sigma n squared and if we look at this guy as n goes so what so let's see so if if n is 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 0 then it's just sigma naught squared right it's just the prior variance so that's nice so when n, so when we have no data we just revert to the prior as n goes to infinity then what does this become if we multiplied by sigma squared and sigma squared then we would see that this is going to oh well it's going to zero of course as n goes to infinity then this is going to zero so the prior or rather the the posterior distribution has a dis has a variance which is which is becoming smaller as n increases So we have, we you know we have our this would be our prior and then as we get a little bit of data maybe it looks like this maybe we get a little bit more data and it's getting even sharper and we get more and more data and finally it's going to converge to something it's going to converge converges to a, a point mass. That's not quite a point mass, but it's getting more and more peaked. It's Gaussian all the time. And in fact, it converges to the same thing as the MLE, which we can see from this expression here. The M so the MLE might not converge to this, but the MLE is converging to something. And um, so how can, we, how can we see that? Let's see. I could have written this out in terms of this, but let's see if we can just see it. So as n goes to infinity, right, as n goes to infinity, we know that this is going to zero, right? That was our, our earlier observation. This thing, this thing goes to zero. The sigma n squared goes to zero. So the contribution in this convex combination from the prior mean is getting washed out. It's going to zero. It's going to, to nothing. And so the, all all of the this mn let's see so if, if we multiplied this by n we would have n uh, what would happen here n or we can make it put one over instead one over n on the bottom yeah then that would cancel here so then this would go to zero and uh, in fact it would go to it would converge to the the same thing as the mle you can check that uh, that little that little calculation there it's a simple thing so it turns out that MN is going to converge to the same thing as the MLE as N goes to infinity. And the MLE is consistent, in fact. We haven't proven that. But that means that the posterior distribution will concentrate to a point mass at the true value.